Hello everyone, welcome to Soul Horizons Tarot. I am doing a love reading for the sign of Sagittarius. Um, this is a collective reading, so um, if it does not sound familiar, if it does not resonate for you, then it is not your story. Um, the signs and or genders of the card may not apply. Just pay attention to the energy and the characteristics of the card. And if you do like this content, uh, feel free to leave a like, share, subscribe, or comment. I love hearing back from you guys. Um, this is going to be part one for the shorter reading. Uh, part two will be um, digging deeper, uh, using a lot more clarifiers to get more of a more detailed story out of them. But this will be the shorter version for you guys now. Um, as, a, as the love reading, this is forever for whoever is most on your mind. So it could be a current partner, a past partner, a future partner, somebody who you have romantic interest in. Um, I've already done a pre-shuffle, but I'm going to go ahead and shuffle out your spread. And we'll get started. And every time, every time, we get to do the timer. Start. Alright. So, Sagittarius. The first one will be your current energy situation. The second one will be theirs. What is their current energy situation? The third will be what is the current energy situation between the two of you? And the last one will be the future direction, as well as the overall energy on the bottom overall energy from the spread itself, from the connection between the two of you. Um, so let's go. Oh, that's the second time that guy's come out. Page of Swords, you may be dealing with a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, but that is the second time he has flipped. Tell me about Sagittarius. What do they most need to hear? Is that the no. What is it? What do they most need to hear at this time? For their best interest, greatest good, highest potential in regards to love. For the sign of Sagittarius, please. energy there with the Hierophant, your energy, your person's, Ooh, okay, current energy, oh, you guys are not budging, and it was probable, out oh, our future direction, excuse me, all right, Good. Alright. You know what? Let me actually I can zoom in just a bit. Alright, so let's start off with your current energy situation though. This is the short, so we're not gonna clarify anything. If this sounds familiar and you want more details, you'll have to check out part two. It will be uploaded with the same um, title, but it will say extended in the title. So, your current energy is the Four of Pentacles. Somebody else got that. It's been a bit since I've done a reading, but whoever I did last... Was it Capricorn? I think it was. Um, you're in the Four of Pentacles, so... Restriction, caution, um, kind of hogging or bogarting or being very wary or careful with your money, your time, your energy possibly. You may be kind of withdrawn or kind of
of hard to approach, guarded. Sometimes the Four of Pentacles can talk about, you know, um, financial struggle, um, things being tight and having to watch your expenditures, like not splurging, not getting getting crazy with any like luxury items. It's it's like the necessity. Um, and then it also can talk about that towards your own time, your own energy as well. So that seems to be the energy that you are in, like, individually. Um, so let's see. I don't know why I'm getting magician vibes, probably because he's got a, like a red cape cloak thing. Um, let's look at your feelings towards this person. How does Sagittarius feel? What are their feelings? What are Sagittarius's feelings for this person? What are Sagittarius's current feelings towards this person, please? What are Sagittarius's feelings towards this person? Okay, well, that's two. I usually prefer uh, Capricorn and Aquarius. I'm gonna put those back because I prefer one. And it didn't feel right anyway. Tell me about um, Sagittarius's. He kind of might have a love hate. Not love hate. That's that's strong. Mm. There's kind of an obsession, but also a desire, a strong desire. It's to the point of obsessing. Okay, there we go. Oh, that flipped earlier in the pre-shuffle. So your feelings. The Ten of Wands, feeling burdened in some way. Your feelings toward them, you might feel burdened uh, of those feelings, by those feelings towards them. Or you may feel like something about this connection, something about this person is burdensome. Or something is weighing heavy on you. The Ten of Wands, any of the Tens can represent completion. So you may be coming to the end of a long struggle. Um, Something that is either physically, mentally, emotionally exhausting. You may have already a lot on your plate and, and, their, and your feelings towards this person or this person in general is just one more thing that you feel like you have to carry. We do have that phoenix. So that can represent rebirth. Maybe you're getting your second wind here. When it comes to your feelings, maybe your passion for them has been reignited because wands do talk about passion. But there's still a sense of hardship or struggle. Tell me what you know what, this card popped out a lot for you, like three times, I believe, at three of wands. There could be distance here, or you could be waiting on this person to make a move. Tell me about Sagittarius's thoughts and feelings about the situation between them. What are Sagittarius's, what do they think and feel about the situation? There it is again. It will not be ignored. It was on the bottom of the deck after I got done pulling your first four. It came out for this, and then it came out again here. So Capricorn energy, possibly. You also have Taurus, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, as well as Aries, Leo, Sag, uh, for signs. Now that, oh, and Pisces. Um, your thoughts and feelings towards the situation. Some of you may feel like you're bound to the situation or bound to the person. Um, with that Ten of Wands, it can talk about like carrying out an obligation or a responsibility. But something about it is definitely weighing heavy on you. Maybe physically, mentally, or emotionally exhausting you, draining you in some way. We'll definitely clarify this guy here. This could talk about being obsessed or possessive. Maybe there's a lust factor here. Um, a very strong um, physical attraction kind of can't, uh, like a temptation or magnetism or chemistry that can't be ignored or denied. Mm. 
Mm. You know, as as much as this guy cannot let go of what he has, what is precious to him, what is valuable. I say him because it's a him in the card. You could be a woman. Um, but as much as this means to hold tightly to, it also means not to let go. So you may feel like you can't let this person go or you are somehow bound, tied, stuck to the situation or to this person. Again, there could be a sense of fadedness, but it might be more on the unhealthy side. We'll definitely see with the clarifier part two what exactly that might be with the devil. But it can talk about karmic or toxic or unhealthy, but it can also just talk about a very strong, yes, physical attraction, but also like a responsibility that you just can't quit. You can't just walk away from. Okay, so let's look at their current situation feelings and, and same on their side. So they're in the hangman. Um, they are feeling stuck, trapped, uh, or stagnant in some way. They may be uh, in a period of stagnation or stuck in limbo. Something is not progressing that they want or they are approaching something from a different direction or trying to look at things from a different perspective. Um, doesn't tell me a whole lot except that I don't think there's a lot of movement for them. Again, as an individual, something that they may be trying to achieve or accomplish may be kind of like not progressing, not making movement. Um, so they're stuck in that hangman position, which you can also talk about self-sacrifice and the need to look at something from a different point of view. Um, they may be doing a bit of soul searching, but we'll see with the part two. What is this person's feelings towards Sagittarius? How does this person feel? What are their feelings for Sagittarius at this time? And two cards, the Moon and the Six of Pentacles. It does kind of feel like they're holding something back. Tell me. Okay, is that one? Two of Cups. This person definitely loves you. There's, there's strong emotion here. Is love or they have feelings <laughs> you know it's not cold attached it's there's the two of cups talks about seeing someone eye to eye um, being receptive and open and even expressive with their emotions whether or not you know they're expressing to you they're open it looks like so far of course the clarifiers can change that but there is love here towards you from this person or a strong bond, emotional bond. Not like, mm, Two of Cups is not as strong as, say, the Lovers, or even the Devil, but it's still, it's a good card to receive there, um, if you're hoping for that. Tell me about this person's thoughts or feelings about the current situation between them and Sagittarius. Almost had one flip. Tell me about this person's thoughts or feelings about the current situation between them, between Sagittarius and this person. What's this person's thoughts and feelings about the current situation? can go very different directions. The wheel could talk about fate, karma, um, destiny, something like the luck of the draw or you know, uh, bad luck. It can sometimes talk about the opposite end of that spectrum where you are blessed in some way. It can also take away 
Um, so we'll definitely have to clarify that as well. It could be to them this is just a phase or a cycle, not the relationship, but whatever's going on currently between you. Like it's just a phase or it's just, you know, the, the wheel will spin again or the wheel will t uh, be a, you know, it's, if it's upside down, if it's poor fate, then it will return to um, positive the positive side, or vice versa. Like, things will turn around again. This is, I think, it's kind of like this feeling of, because it's interesting, both of these cards, well, all three of them, really, if you think about it, are upside down. You can see him, he's upside down. There's two figures here where one is a reflection of the other person. So he's upside down, and then there's two figures here where one is upside down. This person may see you as unreachable. Kind of something on a plane of existence that they can't reach. So there definitely could be distance. You could have like an online relationship with this person or know them from social, social media or something online. Like there's a um, a wall between you, whether literal or figurative, hypothetical, whatever. There's a... Just like in this card show, and I'll try to get it a little closer. There's something that's preventing the two of you from coming together. That's how this person feels and sees the situation as well. Feels about you and sees the situation. You are somehow removed from them. Okay. So the current energy situation is the Knight of Pentacles. So that tells me there's not a lot of movement. It could be a complete standstill, or it could just be very, very, very slow. Whatever progress you make towards each other, with each other, um, it's not obvious at times. It may seem like it's not moving at all. The pace it's going, or the direction it's going, is almost imperceptible. Imperceivable? Hard to perceive. It's imperceptible. So... There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of movement. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not consistent, but that would be consistently slow. I say slow because that is the slowest night in tarot. He takes his time, he evaluates, he plans, strategizes, um, very Virgo energy. He has to, you know, likes to make a, a list or a to-do list. So if you think about that as the energy between a couple, it's the pay, like they're not exaggerated moves. They may be reliable, consistent, but it's not, you know, it's very directed. But we'll see with part two when we clarify exactly what that means for the two of you. Um, tell me about, it could also mean like literally no movement, and that would make sense with the two of your energies um, right now. You're both kind of in, um, not, I won't say debilitated, but you're cautious, they are in limbo. Or something about their life is in limbo. Tell me about the strengths. What are the strengths or the potential strengths between Sagittarius and this person? What are the strengths or the potential strengths between Sagittarius and this person? 
one of the strengths and potential strength between Sagittarius and this person, please. Okay. I think there's an intuitive, intuitive, mm, right. the Eight of Cups is a card about walking away, so I'm trying to figure out how I could translate that into a strength. Maybe knowing that when it's time to walk away, maybe not spit like not walk away from the relationship itself, but walk away from an argument, walk away from a disagreement, walk away from, um, you know, things that may cause that, you know, some people might fight over or beat to death. But, like, knowing the right time to, like, choosing your battles, basically. Also, an in intuitive understanding when something is wrong being able to pick up on each other's feelings and energy between the two of you. I also get the sense of seeing the good in a situation, but that would be like a mutual strength. Maybe you help this person do that or they help you do that. See the good in like, you know, situations that you, were, would be hard to see a positive side or light to kind of an odd strength to get there. I mean, choose your battles wisely and an intuitive understanding of when the other person is struggling or um, feeling off, feeling like something's wrong. Picking up the pieces as well. Seeing the good in, yeah, because, like, usually, this is the after tarot, so usually it only shows this person in the background walking away. This person is not here in traditional depictions. But she's come along to examine the cup that he chose to walk away from. So it's an energy of, like, what you can't see the good in, I can. That's like the strength between the two of you. Alright, so let's look at the challenges. What are some of the challenges and obstacles between Sagittarius and this person? What are their biggest challenges or obstacles? What are their biggest challenges or obstacles between Sagittarius and this person, please? out of balance. There's a lack of balance, a lack of prioritization. Things are up in the air. There could be indecision, inconsistency. Something needs to be reconfigured, reevaluated, or reprioritized. Somebody may struggle with that, or both of you as a couple struggle to see eye to eye, value the same things, or there could just be an imbalance. Like maybe it's not 50-50 or even 60-40. And some, like, there's a lack of equal give and take or equal reciprocity here. So mainly I would see this as imbalance. <coughs> when we clarify, we might give us some more information on what exactly Oh, and by the way, that, that is all for fixed signs, Taurus, uh, Leo, 
uh, Aquarius and Scorpio, but it's also the card of Sagittarius because it's a Jupiter ruled card. So this is your actual Sagittarius. Not that that's you, but that's your card. Alright, so let's look at the future direction of this thing. Between the two of you, we have the King of Wands. So that does look like some kind of action is being taken, initiate, initiative. Um, who, towards what, or in what direction. You know, there's a lot of passion, fire, determination, ambition. Um, taking on a leadership role here, so somebody may take be taking the lead, um, going after what they want, sparking or initiating a change, or making a, a strong decision. We won't know what, what direction that goes until we clarify. That is um, Leo's card. It could be a fire sign, but uh, you are the fire sign, but it, you could be dealing with another fire sign, or this could be you kind of um, taking the baton here, or maybe even passing on the baton. But usually the King of Wands is an action taker. Okay, tell me. Oh, what am I doing? I'm not supposed to be using those yet. Tell me about what action, well, we'll have to clarify more with what direction this is going. I kind of see that as positive right now, um, but we'll definitely have to clarify. Looks like action. There is action. Tell me about <clears throat> the, what, what can Sagittarius expect this person to what action can Sagittarius expect this person to make towards them? What will this person most likely do? What action will they take towards Sagittarius? Okay. Oi! Really? Capricorn again. initiate um, an intimate account encounter to keep it G-rated or PG-rated. Why is G-rated? But it almost kind of feels like trigger triggering you in a way that they know how to manipulate. This might not be like vindictive or malicious, but it could be like knowing how to push your buttons, knowing what uh, tempts you, knowing what entices you, and making a move. So it could be like something as simple as like knowing that you love a certain cologne and they make sure that they're wearing it the next time they see you because it makes you weak. Or maybe sends you like a risky, a risque picture. Something that they hope will kind of spark your interest or tempt you. It is a manipulation, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's, you know, it has bad or negative intention. We'll definitely have to see. As an action, I, I would see the devil as kind of like trying to coax you, trying to woo you, sway you in some way. Um, what's that other word? I almost had it. Not entice. I'll think of it. It'll come. Uh -huh. That's what she said. Sexual advances. It's not. It's, that's not the word, but it's it's a synonym. It means the same thing. Tell me about the most probable 
outcome between Sagittarius and this person. Most probable meaning not definitive. You have free will, this person has free will, and then there is whatever you want to call it, divine will, universe stepping in, God's will, whatever floats your boat, whatever source you tune to. Tell me about the most probable outcome between Sagittarius and this person, please. you have a hard time resisting this person. And they know it. It could be the other way around. You could feel like they feel that way about you, but I'm, I'm sensing that since they are showing up with the devil as an action towards you, and that's how you're feeling about the situation right now, um, that it's you that has more of Anyway, the most probable outcome here with the Seven of Cups. See, this is like confusing, lack of clarity. And the future of this connection could literally be uncertain. Because with the Seven of Cups, this can talk about, you know, um, over idealizing, romanticizing self-deception it's getting something like it's that card of be careful what you wish for in each of the seven cups there are a cho there are choices I don't know if you can see this very well but each of these like symbolize different things victory power money success change um, and then he's, he's chosen the one with the jewels, which would be maybe, you know, um, wealth, abundance. But what he hasn't realized is that he has also attracted the snake, which is in another cup. The snake can talk about um, change, but also traditionally the snake serpents represent trickery. But I also look as the snake is like similar to the phoenix, transformative because it sheds a skin, it changes, it adapts, it evolves. Um, but yeah, the snake in this particular card can mean foolish, danger, and then you know tarot is does have biblical depictions. Um, so, if you think of the Garden of Eden, that kind of similar to the devil. Um, but yeah, I think this is, the outcome is uncertain or unclear. Or there may be confusion on one or both of your parts surrounding, there might be a lack of closure or clarity here. We'll definitely have to... clarify, but I'm feeling like with the devil here as an action towards you, and there are snakes in the background here, especially this one right here is the same, looks like the same snake. It's like temptation, maybe one of you regrets giving in to the temptation, or you realize that it is just that. So we'll, we'll have to clarify the seven. It's not a great outcome, but it could just simply mean, again, that it the, the outcome is uncertain based on what happens, um, you know, with all of this, but with the way this is going down in line, you know, this person, this, the King of Wands can be very passionate, very attractive, um, can kind of sweep you off your feet, be very charismatic and charming. And I, that's what I'm kind of getting, kind of getting is the this, the charm. Somebody's going to try to 
overpower your will here, charm you. That's going to aggravate me that I can't think of that word, and it's an easy word. Um, almost had it again. It's like entice, but it means more like flirtatious or has a certain <laughs> goal in mind. Are you trying to that word me? Seduce. There it is. Seduce. Seduction. Use seduction. Okay. Now that we've accomplished that. <laughs> um, this is your short reading. Um, let me know how it resonated for you in the comments. If you uh, feel free to do that at your comfort level, of course. Or just leave a like, share, or and or subscribe if you want to see future content. I appreciate anyone who stopped in and um, if you've lasted this long, I really appreciate appreciate it. Um, yeah, every little bit of support helps and we will now go on to part two where we will clarify each of these and get a lot more information. So if I don't see you there, um, thank you and if I do, I'll talk to you soon.